Hey everyone, I'm Amy Shira Title, and welcome to a very special quarantine edition of The Vintage Space. And I mean that very literally. It is currently March 17th, 2020, which means most of the United States is under a self-imposed quarantine on account of the coronavirus. So I thought it would be fun today to look at what happened when the Apollo astronauts were quarantined after their missions to the moon. The issue of Apollo and quarantine came up because no one could be sure that the astronauts wouldn't bring back some kind of sickness from the moon, something we shall call moon plague. The worst case scenario was that this moon plague would somehow infect the entire world, wiping out all of humanity right after NASA achieved the amazing goal of landing men on the moon. To avoid such a horrific end to the Apollo program, NASA worked with the Interagency Committee on Bat Contamination to figure out a way to protect not only humanity, but also all plant and animal life from some potential lunar disease. The joint agency's goals were threefold. To protect the public's health, agriculture, and other living resources, to protect the integrity of the lunar samples and the science experiments, and to ensure that the operational aspects of the program were least compromised. To achieve these goals, NASA and the ICBC created a three-stage quarantine program that would begin at the moment the astronauts sealed the hatch after their last moonwalk, and would last a full 21 days. But it wasn't just about containing possible contamination on the way back from the moon or returning from the moon. If the crew did get sick after their mission, how could doctors be sure that it was the moon plague and not just a common Earth cold? To take that potential out of the equation, the astronauts were quarantined before the flight. Most germs and viruses we have on Earth have about a three-week incubation period, which means it takes three weeks from you being exposed to something to start showing signs of having an illness. So the crew was quarantined before the flight such that anything that happened after the mission could not be chalked up to some earthly virus. This is actually something NASA still does today, though the rationale is to prevent astronauts getting sick in space. The last thing you want when you don't have gravity is a head cold, because you know what's not gonna drain without gravity? Sinuses. So all Apollo astronauts launched to the moon happy and healthy. Once they landed on the moon and closed the hatch after their final EVA, that's when quarantine began. The first stage of quarantine was quarantining the crew and all of their collected samples during the return to Earth. That's the transfer to Earth as well as re-entry and splashdown. When we're talking about quarantine, that's a pretty easy phase. There was nothing up there for them to interact with, so it was pretty simple to just keep everything sealed up and know that nothing was going to happen. Once the mission splashed down, however, things got a little more complicated. NASA did consider keeping the astronauts sealed inside the spacecraft during recovery, so they would still be inside the capsule when it was lifted out of the water and placed on the deck of the recovery carrier. The idea being you put the entire spacecraft in a controlled environment, and that means that there's no contaminants escaping when the astronauts get out. But this was deemed unsafe, because the crew would be sitting baking in the metal capsule for hours. They would need to have some specialized air conditioning system, and it was too much for the suits to handle on its own. So it was easier to have them egress the capsule when it was in the water. Thus, the first stage of recovery opened the largest problem in the question of quarantine. The Navy divers that assisted in egress were wearing protective garments, but they had to open the capsule to get the crew, which means it was exposed to the air and the water for a brief period of time. The hatch was opened and the divers threw in biological isolation garments, head-to-toe garments that included a mask that would keep all of the astronauts' germs inside. Once they were in these specialized garments, they were airlifted up into the helicopter that then landed on the recovery carrier, and then they transferred into the mobile quarantine facility. And by transferred, I mean walked. The MQF was a specially designed Airstream trailer that had sleeping facilities, bathroom, kitchen, and a lounge area. But it wasn't just for the crew. Technicians had to be inside as well to help the crew transfer all of the samples from the spacecraft into the MQF. They did that with a specially pressurized little foldable tunnel thing. The MQF was not only totally self-contained, it was also movable. The crew stayed inside when it was loaded into a transport aircraft and then flown to Ellis Air Force Base. From there, it was loaded onto a flatbed truck and driven to the Lunar Receiving Laboratory at the Johnson Space Center. 
The LRL was a state-of-the-art quarantine facility that not only housed the crew, the spacecraft, and their rocks from the surface, it was actually staffed. Staff members had to pass through an airlock and shower of ultraviolet light that would kill exposed bacteria and microbes before they went into the LRL. Then they had to don clean clothes that hadn't been outside. Leaving the LRL meant taking a shower and disinfecting. Of course, all the staff in the LRL had to not only be healthy, pregnant women weren't allowed to work there either. But it was necessary to have staff, otherwise, who would feed the crew? And how would the doctors perform the physical exams on the crew to make sure they weren't sick? The LRL also included administrative offices. The crew could actually talk to the media as well as NASA brass through big windows, so they could have meetings and mission debriefings without exposing anybody to the potential moon plague they were carrying. The whole quarantine lasted a total of three weeks, at the end of which the Apollo 11 astronauts showed absolutely no signs of illness, so they were free to go. The same thing happened for the crew of Apollo 12, only they didn't have to don the full isolation garments when they were recovered from the ocean, instead they just put on masks. In the spring of 1970, the Interagency Committee on Bat Contamination determined that such quarantine measures were not actually necessary. Since none of the crew exhibited any illnesses, and the surface of the moon had been untouched for billions of years, they figured that there was nothing that the crew was going to bring back that could affect humanity. Some quarantine measures were kept in place for the crew of Apollo 14 because this mission took a deep core sample, and there was some question that a core sample might have material on it that was not present on the surface rocks that the earlier missions had collected. Of course, Apollo 13 did not need to go through quarantine because they did not land on the moon. Apollo 14 was ultimately the last mission to spend significant time in quarantine, though all lunar samples were put through the same strict quarantine measures as the original samples from Apollo 11. This was thought to be the best way of preserving their integrity. Do make sure that your moon rocks are properly quarantined. Do social distance. Consider hanging out through a window. Do play with your moon rocks like they're boobies, as long as you're wearing gloves. Thanks, Pete Conrad. Do play ukulele, ideally if you're good at it. Do drink a refreshing Coca-Cola while your buddy plays with pieces of hardware. Do eat cake! Neil Armstrong celebrated his 39th birthday in quarantine with a decent-sized crowd of medics and technicians. Do be sure to eat. Nutrition is important all the time.